aerial robots are no longer just flying, they are starting to interact with and manipulate with the world around them. Joining us now today is Professor Him Jin Kim from Seoul National University to explore the latest advances in physically intelligent flight and what's next for the autonomous aerial systems. Professor Kim, it's great to have you with us today. We know that aerial robots now are advancing beyond flying. So how are they become physically intelligent? That's a great question. Physical intelligence means its ability to understand its own body with its sensory signals and be comfortable with its own muscle movement and perhaps learn to move in a new way, learning new movement skills. And aero robots are developing in the similar manner by combining advances in control, sensing, and mechanism design. Now, drones are, you know, just not you know, eye in the skies, they are becoming hands in the skies, mm -hmm. meaning they know how to use its own body to interact with the environment. And that's what I mean by physical intelligence for the flying robots. You mentioned that there are a lot of advances. So what are some of the key breakthroughs in terms of whether in control, perception or mechanical designs that make true aerial manipulation possible today? In control, people are now using nonlinear robots control which can counteract against a lot of disturbance occurring when the drones interact with the environment. So when drones touch the infrastructure or objects, we don't know how much force or torques actually uh, appear, but you know, robust controls can counteract those extra ingredients so that it can maintain stability while exercising forces on the structures. And in the sensing, you know, a lot of developments in deep learning area there are many onboard learning and computer vision algorithms that can be used to detect the objects that drone has to work on. And for the mechanism, now it's not just the software, but in terms of clever design, people are using compliant structures or morphing structures and maybe mechanisms that can generate more power within the same dimension, or maybe lightweight, robotic arms and things like that. So you know, combining advances in all those areas, drone can now just, you know, from looking at the environments, they can actually touch the environments. Can you share an example from your lab and where an aerial robot has successfully interacted with the environment in a new or unexpected way? So in one of the experiments that we've done in my, my lab, we have a drone that can perch just like birds oh. and exercise the force at the same time. Or it can hover and you know, maybe open a door and hover and maybe pull a tightly wedged objects, just like you know, people playing like tug of war games, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, you know, in surprising thing is the drones sort of develop their own ways to lean into the interaction meaning when you have to provide enough force, it changes its pose to generate force in a more efficient manner. And it's surprising to see those behaviors being generated on its own rather than pre-programmed manner. And it's probably beginning a, you know, opening a new way toward physical intelligence, I hope. So moving forward, as robots, they learn to fly and act, what do you see are the biggest challenges ahead in achieving full autonomy and safe physical interaction? So the most critical challenge, I think, is the dimension of the platform. So mostly people like me use small multi-rotor drones in the laboratory setting. But to be able to rescue human or lift heavy debris in the disaster zones, we'll probably need to use you know, heavy duty platforms. And the second is the challenge in terms of onboard sensing. For example, it's still difficult to you know, understand the formable body or moving objects with just onboard vision in the current stage. And hopefully, you know, more real-time deep learning vision algorithms you know, can be utilized to help that you know, development, I hope. So then with all these challenges we discussed, but looking ahead, how do you envision aerial manipulation transforming the real world applications such as maintenance or cooperative tasks? So I think it's going to be transformative. For example, drones have been just you know, looking and avoiding the contacts with other drones or other environments. 
But now we can utilize the drones so that they understand the environment and try to utilize the contact to do more things than just watching around. For example, in Korea alone, just a single year, there are more than 100 fatalities from traditional industrial accidents like you know being hit by falling debris, falling off from heights, and dying due to the building collapse. If we have drones that can change the environment, we can you know replace human lives with the drones. They can hopefully combine their own efforts with other drones to do heavy duty construction and you know try to you know prevent people from working in dangerous high altitude tasks. And by that way, we hope drones become you know, hands that can help us in the areas where humans couldn't reach before. Thank you for sharing your insights and expertise with us today. It's our great honor to have you here. I hope you enjoy Ivers 2025. Okay, great meeting you. Thank you. Thank you.